This is a Brangers. Welcome to the Geek Chest. My name's Steve, and if you hear anything in the background, that is my puppy chewing on a bone and being mischievous as all heck. But today we're going to do another little diorama. If you guys want to do something special to go with your SH Monster, it's Godzilla 2017. You can also do this with the Bandai vinyl, or I'm sure Neko will probably make one. You could do one with that as well. So what I'm actually going to attempt to do, I've never actually tried this before, but we're going to use some actual, well, technically not alive stuff, but we're going to be using some of this moss here to kind of replicate trees for the, pretty much to cover the base for the most part. Uh, what this is is just like floral moss, uh, reindeer moss to be exact, uh, which you can find at like a lot of craft places because uh, they use this stuff for floral arrangements. Uh, you can even find it like uh, I know I've seen it like at Walmart's craft section and stuff like that as well, like stuff like this. But this is going to be primarily for the base. I also picked up some varying sizes of trees to give us a little added depth, which I thought would be cool. I'm uh, not sure how good it's going to look. I might just be using mainly the smaller trees, but we'll see how that goes as we're going along. Uh, you're also going to need some foam board for the base, hot glue gun, marker because we're going to be making a imprint for the tail dragging and footprints and it's a broken foam for some crushed sections and to make the outer edge like we did on my previous uh diorama video now what i'm gonna try to replicate okay, is just kind of like what i've seen in uh some of the trailers where he's just kind of walking in the woods so i'm just gonna make it look like he's stopping through a bunch of the trees uh, i'm not going to be making a backdrop uh, you guys could add one if you wanted to just use some extra particle board and just literally print out a backdrop would be the easiest thing to do but i'm mainly doing this for photos and i wanted to also not take up a craft ton of space on the shelf as well so that's mainly why i'm not like adding mountains or anything else to this i'm going to keep it as pretty much as a basic of a base as possible so if you guys wanted to try to replicate it, it'd be pretty simple to do. Uh, you're also going to need some paint. I haven't actually gone out and got it yet, but mainly I'm going to set it up so I can do photos and then paint these sections after. But you guys will get to see me paint it, but you'll mainly just want like some brown dirt colored paint or enough paint to mix it to make the colors, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing anyways. So first and foremost, what we're going to want to do is figure out exactly where our Godzilla is going to stand on the base, which right now the way he's set up is pretty much how I want it. Is this as forward looking as possible. And then what I'm gonna do is make it look like he's walking. So, or at least he can stand, but we have to make it look like he made his way through the woods, slash forest, whatever it's going to be. Now, uh, the tail's gonna be dragging the entire time. So I can make a marker point here. So you guys will see right here, uh, try not to draw on your Godzilla, but I'm going to make it a little bit wide because I'm going to be adding some foam here anyways. So what I'm going to do is just run that along the edge. Because again, we want to make it look like he's dragging his tail. But you don't really need... That's yeah, going to have to be a little bit wider there. So we're just going to try to make it look like his tail is mostly dragging, but we'll end up making this an even size anyways. But for the most part, that's about as wide as I'm going to want it. Then I'm going to go from there. His tail would stop right about here. So that's pretty much going to be where my cutoff point is, is right there. Next, we'll make an outline around his feet. Make it look like where he's crushed the ground. Because I want his feet to be able to stand inside of the circle with a little bit of freedom. And then I'm just going to add foam around it to make a crushed rock look. And same with this foot. Get it to sit flat. Just draw around it. Also, if you want to be a little bit finer detail about it, you can also use a pen. But I know this guy is going to be shifting around the shelf anyways. So, if it's a little bigger for me, that actually works out pretty well. Then don't worry about messing up your lining. Because this is going to be all pretty much 
covered with moss eventually anyways. Now, I want to make it look like he's been walking. So, I'm going to possibly arc him back and start making little circle imprints for about how far I feel like Godzilla could have maybe made. Because we're going to make quite a few little imprints. And then where his foot would be. Going to keep moving it backwards. And just keep making little patterns until we get it done. So I'm going to keep making these little lines and I will come back once I uh, get everything all situated so you guys can at least see like the patterns that I'm going to have for him walking. So if you guys can see it, but that's pretty much going to be the pattern I'm going to be going for with the trees because I want to make it look like he's been walking all the way there. But the primary base is going to be right here. So this is we pretty much where Godzilla's going to always be standing, but this is just going to add a little bit more detail to the overall base when we're done with it. Uh, next, we got to make this look kind of rough, and we're going to add all the foam pieces first. So for this next part, it is mostly the same as what we did in the previous one. Well, we're going to take our hot glue gun. And first and foremost, I'm just going to go around the edge, because what I want to do is make the edge of this look kind of rocky to give it a little bit more character on the outside than just plants <laughs> even though i know it's not quite realistic but i want to make this look as similar to a base as possible plus it'll kind of tie in with the footprints especially back here as well so uh, for the most part for the back section i'm going to leave it alone but around here i'm going to be adding foam just kind of make like a little barrier for the little plants here so first of what you want to do you just want to take a little hot glue and i'll show you guys this little process that i do and then i'm just going to stop and i will finish this myself and then we'll cut back to when i'm fully done but essentially you just take a little hot glue make a strip and you literally just take some foam and start breaking it apart and just adding it to the edges here and then we're going to paint this later to make it kind of look like rock which I'm probably going to be using browns for this instead of my normal. Oh, hey, you. Instead of my normal uh, gray I've been using for streets. Oh. Then I'm going to have to clean this up. Oh. Shiji. Okay, I'm going to pause the video right back once I get this all set up and done. But this is generally just the process. Just again, add some hot glue, break some foam off, just add it to the top of the glue. And you're good to go. Alright, so next thing we're going to do, since we got all the border done for our foam bits, uh, maybe want to add a little bit more right there. But for the most part, you can see pretty much what I was going for. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to add a couple more foam bits here and there, but I'll do that in my own time. Uh, but next, what you're going to want to do is for the footprints and for the dragging mark, as you can see what I did here is I'm just kind of distressing this foam board. I'm just using like the flat end of my marker. And just kind of squishing it down. Because I want it to look kind of messed up and a little squished. So it looks more like a footprint <laughs> when it's done. So as you can see, now that one's kind of smooshed. And doing this will make it look more like distressed ground. Or you can definitely tell something stepped on it when it's uh, all said and done. Uh, also on like the bottom of my X-Acto knife. As a little ball. So I can use that too. Just to kind of squish around these edges here. In order to get it to sink in a bit. Because I don't want it to look super smooth. Because if it looks super smooth, it's not going to look like dirt. And hopefully when I paint over it, all this stuff kind of goes away. Because you'll see even some of the paper's kind of tearing here, but that's just kind of help to add to the ground effect. Because I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of dust in here anyways with the paint in order to make it look more like dirt too. But I just kind of wanted to have a more sunken look. So I'm going to go through that, but since I already did these, I'll show you guys too what I'm going to be doing. Is just taking some hot glue, going 
around the edge here of my little footprint I made. I was going to take some of this foam board and do the same thing I did on the outside. I was making some raised earth around the footprint. But what I'm going to probably do is squish this down once I get enough of this on here because it doesn't need to be like upright and as jagged looking as it does right now. So once I get all that on there, just kind of smoosh it down. Pinch it a bit. That part didn't stick on very well. So you just re-hot glue. Also messing around with hot glue, this stuff, again, is hot. <laughs> so be forewarned, you might get a little heat when you're touching it. It's usually not too bad, but because it comes off pretty quick and it cools off quick too. But if you guys are worried about the heat, I recommend wearing some insulated gloves when doing this. So now we got our crushed in little footprints. So grabbing Godzilla, you can see his foot sits in there pretty well. You don't want it to be slow once it's painted, but it definitely sits in there now. So now I'm going to go through, finish distressing all this, and also adding my little rocky foam edges to each of the footprints and the base of the tail print as well. All right, now I got glue all over my fingers. We have what kind of looks like a cookie frosting square, <laughs> but uh, when it's all said and done to paint it, it should look good. It's just going to be kind of weird as of right now. But as you can see, we got the drag marks for Godzilla's tail. Godzilla can stand in his footprints. I made these ones a little bit bigger. So he's got a little bit of room, so hopefully it won't scuff up too much. I won't have to worry about repainting this thing eventually. Uh, maybe one too many footprints, but we'll see once it's all said and done. But for right now, pretty happy with that desired look. So now we're going to leave him in here because we're going to set up where we kind of want the trees at. Which what these trees are is primarily for train sets. For this bag, you're going to get a varying sizes of 2 inch to 3 inch. Uh, this one supposedly comes with 10 of them. So I think I just want the smaller guys. You only get four of the bigger ones. But we'll see. So we're going to figure out our placement for these, which possibly on the sides might make more sense because technically if he was walking, he probably kicked these ones over. So more or less in front of him, maybe like close to where his legs would be. Because pretty much behind him is more or less going to be like a wake of destruction, except for like I could probably get away with putting some trees towards the outside. Uh, which one's a larger one? This one's a larger one. Right, so a larger one might be kind of cool up front. Do like a big one there, and then like smaller ones, smaller ones towards the back. So we're gonna go with that. So you just take hot glue, generous helping of it, and I'm just gonna stick it right there. So I'll use two of the bigger trees for the front section. Uh, which other one do I like? This one's got some color to it. Generous helping. Stick that guy over here. Then I'm just going to kind of take the rest of the smaller guys. Kind of place them wherever I feel like. Which I recommend doing the same for you guys. Just kind of just go with the flow. Figure out where you want to put them. Because like I said, I kind of want them to make at least some sense. Because what I'm hoping is with the moss, when I kind of set them up, it's going to hide a lot of the size instead of making it look like just small trees. They'll look a little bit bigger is what I'm hoping. A little bit here and there. Try to alleviate getting glue all over your stuff. Uh, I am going to take one of these guys and stick it right underneath his leg. Right there. And I think that's pretty good placement. 
I don't know if I really need any more trees because the rest of the spots I feel like if I stick them here it would have made sense for him to kick it over and this stuff I'm not actually sure how to go about this because it appears like I get clumps <laughs> so I kind of just want to work that around each of the sections so I think I could just glue a little bit and go with the flow this bag's got a bit of a smell to it <laughs> but it'd be like just kind of filling in edges and whatnot kind of like what we did with the smoke for the shin godzillas i'm just gonna kind of glue a section and just start placing moss here and there and seeing how that works kind of like so so there's one section <laughs> I'm going to just sit here and go through the rest of this and I'll show you guys the finished work once I get it all set up and placed. All right, so I'm back. <laughs> Got this all glued together. So now you guys can kind of see what the finished result's gonna look like, which now I'm kind of happy with all those footsteps because gluing these moss things down is a pain to butt. So the less you have to do, the better. But so far, liking the way it's looking, kind of looks like a forest. The trees are fairly hidden. Uh, the larger ones, Definitely look a little bit more out of place. So if you guys do this, I recommend just sticking with small trees. But for the most part, still looks really good. Uh, was going to wait till I did this part. But I figured I'd let you guys know is when you're hot gluing, when you're all done, you're going to have to sit here and move all these little axis strands of the hot glue string from your gun. Because when you're moving around and trying to do this quick, there's going to be a lot of string. So you can see there's a little bit here and there. But we're pretty much majority-wise done. Uh, the reason I'm going to say, because some of you guys might be like, hey, why didn't you paint the foam before you started doing all this? And because when you're going to be painting, you're going to have to take a little bit of care to try not to get paint on the plants. It's not a big deal because it's, it kind of is going to blend in anyways. But uh, it would be easier if you did it beforehand. And the reason I don't, is because since we're using foam, if you knock into it, you're possibly going to break it off. And I want to alleviate that as much as possible because when you break it off, it's going to take the paint with it. So that's usually why I do it towards the end because when I'm going to be putting the figure on and off of it, it's not going to be a whole lot. So I'm not going to really lose much paint off the foam. I won't really have to worry about the foam breaking off with the paint. So that's usually why I do it towards the end instead of when I'm trying to glue this the hot glue gun, everything's going to be smacking around and everything. So, uh, come right back once I uh, go get to paint. But what we're going to be doing here is just painting all the white foam. It's the exact same technique that I use for the Shin Godzilla diorama, which all you do, take a little bit of your paint, and then we're just going to start applying it to the board here. Uh, pretty simple. <laughs> for this part, you just literally just spread it on. But for the foam bits, you're just going to want to dab this on. And make sure you just cover every little nook and cranny that you can get it this into. Now, it's going to be a pain in the butt for me to paint this with this in front of the camera. So I'm going to come back once this is done. But essentially, you guys get to see the technique that I'm going to be using. And then I will come back to if I do decide to do any like little final finishing touches. All right, so now that we have everything done, everything's drying, good to go. And as you can see, I have a... SC Monster, it's 2017 sitting on the stand. And overall, I think it looks cool. Uh, per definitely not anime accurate <laughs> per se, but we kind of get the overall feel of what we I've gotten, at least out of the trailers. And just to uh, take the big guy off here real quick, but I'll do some close-up shots here in just a second, just so you guys can see him posing with the stand, but you guys can just kind of see the overall end effect of the way it looks so we got the footprints of godzilla walking towards got some little debris in there and just so you guys the end of the paint job too kind of looks more like mud <laughs> the way it's set up right now like i do like the way it turned out with the uh around the footprints because you figure a lot of this at least from what i've seen from the trailers and stuff it looks a lot like jungle and a lot of that's more wetland so you would expect 
they were the ground to kind of cave up. It's going to have definitely more of like a mud wet look. Maybe could add the tail drag a little bit more detail right there. But since he's going to be having his tail on it anyways, I'm not too worried about it. But if you guys wanted to replicate this, I'd recommend maybe doing like a light black wash over top and just in one solid direction to kind of get that nice scrape look. You can even do it with the dirt here too to give it a little bit more added effect. But from for what I need it for, this will do nicely. And there's still like a couple areas I could even work on. Uh, you could probably see right here, there's still a little bit of the foam showing up. But it's kind of hard to tell when you're, uh, everything's like wet and drying. Like you have to wait for everything to dry in order to kind of see your screw-ups per se. Which I might come back and touch up a few of these spots, but as of right now, again, I'm not too worried about it because for photos, you're not going to really notice it. And him with his tail being here and it being kind of like tucked underneath, you're not going to notice it with it sitting on the display either. And plus, I like that I left the back section here open, especially if I want to do photos, because then I can have as much forestry as possible without having the border in the way but yeah overall pretty uh pretty pleased with it and you guys can also just follow along and replicate this yourselves if you guys want to have a little base for your sh mouse starts again try to keep it a little more simplified <laughs> than not having like buildings and stuff to have to make in order to put this on it or even mountains uh, again if you guys want to make like a little backdrop you can just take some uh, foam board just like i used for the bottom here you just Put it along the back. You'll have to glue on the bottom. That and make some triangles hook onto the back in order to keep the board upright. But you could do that and then just add a backdrop from the anime in the background if you wanted to. Or even just like clouds. I guess clouds would work too if you want to have something in the back. But again, I kind of want to keep this as simple as possible just so if you guys want to do this at home, it's pretty easy to replicate. But yeah, again, uh, I do hopefully plan on doing some more of these. I really, I had some suggestions for some 54s to do. So I might try to work on that next when I get some spare time. Uh, possibly, I want to do either the Diet building or the scene where he's walking through the electric lines. Uh, both kind of present their own difficulties. So I'm not sure exactly which one I want to go with yet. But yeah, uh, let me know in the comment section below if there's anything you guys like to see in particular. I, I can't guarantee when they would go up or even if I would do them. But it would be nice to just kind of like get some input on maybe some more dioramas maybe working on in the future. And if you guys have made your own dioramas, definitely share it with us on like Facebook, Instagram, tag us in it. Uh, I would definitely love to see what you guys have been doing. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button, subscribe, become a ranger today. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.